Hello, and welcome to the Tutorial Toolbox. My name is Tobias, and this is Unity 101 Episode 4. As I said last time, today we're going to start making our very own game. But not it's not going to be a fully fledged game uh, just yet. We will be doing that in the end of the season. But in this tutorial and the upcoming tutorials, we will be doing concept games. Uh, well, we'll be learning some concepts about how to make different types of games in Unity. So let's open up Unity. And before we start with that, I'm just going to show you uh, what I failed to show you last time, uh, how to duplicate an asset uh, while in the Unity Viewer. Uh, so simply highlight it and press Ctrl D. Easy as that. Uh, no need to open up folders and stuff like that. Um, not, not much has changed actually. Uh, I moved the camera up a little bit and I created uh, some folders. Uh, I created the material. No, we had that one. I created the scripts folder, and uh, that's about it actually. So uh, in this first uh, episode about concept game, we are going to be doing player movement, and for the player to move, we need to have a player. So let's create a player. And let's position him at Origo. Let's make him half the size of a normal cube. Just for, I don't know, just for fun. And actually, let's place him a bit above. Well, so he's standing on the Origo. Because the transform takes place in the center of the object. So we want the, the bottom of the object to be standing on the Origo, not the center. Alright, um, then we are going to need something for the player to move on, so let's make a plane, position it at the origo. Alright, so let's take our camera, now we can see we have this big square, and we have this little, little box, it's not that visible, unfortunately, so what we can do to represent that, sorry about that, is we can make a material. Call it player map. I'll give him this light dark blue color, light bluish color. There we go. Now he's a bit more visible. Actually, let's make him green. Then he stands out from the uh, skybox background as well. How about now? Alright, so. Uh, as I said earlier, you can test by starting your game by pressing this uh, this go button. Alright, so right now, can't really do anything, nothing happens when I try to move him around. That's because we need to create a script that tells the transform or the game object, well the transform on the game object, that we want to move it. So how, we, how do we do that? We simply select the game object we wish to create a script on, press add component, and as you can see there's lots of different components here. Uh, mesh, effects, physics, navigation, audio rendering, miscellaneous, and new script. New script is what we are going to choose this time, and you can call it anything, the name doesn't really matter, it's only a reference name. I'm going to call me mind player character player controller. Player controller and the language you can choose JavaScript, C sharp or boo. In this series I'm going to be using C sharp. So the the code isn't that different in the uh, the other languages but there's some significant differences that you have to take into account if you wish to use one of the others. But choose whatever whichever feels the most uh, right for you. So now we have a play controller script in our assets folder. Let's just move it into our scripts folder and double click it. That will open up our mono develop, which is the inbuilt Unity uh, IDE environment for, well, IDE stands for integrated development environment. So it's the 
place where we can write our code. Uh, when uh, just a little heads up, this se uh, series is for beginners, so I'm going to take it a bit slow on well everything, especially the uh, coding parts because there might be some things that are a little bit hard to understand if you're n new to programming. Um, I would however recommend that you go find some kind of tutorial online to get yourself started on programming if you aren't already familiar. It will help you a lot in, uh, in the future uh, because I won't, be, I won't be explaining the super basics of programming here but I will be explaining the, the Unity uh, specific programming things. Um, so yeah, I will also, I will, this channel, Tutorial Toolbox, will make a programming series uh, soon, but um, probably after this Unity series. So if you can't wait, then you can try and follow along, but I would recommend that you learn at least a little bit of programming. But again, I'm going to take it really slow, so hopefully you can follow along. So, when we create a new script, Unity automatically creates these 15 lights, uh, lines for us. Um, these two lines up here that starts with using are basically telling Unity that we want to use all the code that's inside the uh, Unity engine and the system.collections. Uh, it basically tells Unity that there might be some functions or meth well, methods or classes or something that we want to access inside these uh, co codes or files and that lets us reference and use it when we said that we are going to. Uh, then it creates a public class, which is basically the container for the script. It calls it whatever we call the script, and it, it extends MonoBehavior, which is a script that Unity has made, which has all of the basic Unity functions in it, like um, manipulating, well, the spawning and destroying game objects and all kind of cool stuff that we're going to get into later on. It also creates two functions within uh, start and update and start as it says here it also creates these comments as it says here use this for initialization and initialization is basically the first time this script is run then it's going to call the start function if the, and if there's something we want to only be run once and we want it to be run immediately before anything else is done then we place it here. And uh, update is called once per frame, which basically means that it's called about 60 times per second. So every time the game tries to update the scene, uh, the screen, which is the frame, uh, this function is called, which is uh, what we want to manipulate. We want to see every time that the, scene, the, the game updates, we want to check if the player wants to move, and if he does, then we will move. So, how do we check if a player moves? It's actually quite simple. Uh, we do an if statement, and we check if input.getAxis horizontal is greater than zero. So, what does this mean? Uh, input.getAxis is uh, that get axis horizontal. Uh, returns a value between negative 1 and 1, um, a float value uh, between negative 1 and 1 that represents how much either the right or left, sorry, left or right uh, mouse button or A and D keys have been pushed down. So when you on the keyboard press left mouse button input axis horizontal is going to fall towards uh, negative one and if you push the uh, 
the write or the D key or any other configured key, uh, the this uh, get access horizontal is uh, in the configurations that you can change. Uh, it's going to go towards uh, one. So as we can see here, if oh let's start with left. Just make a comment so we know this is left. So when we're below zero, we're going to watch the left, and we want to transform uh, access the transform the transform of, of the object that the script is on. So this transform, which will allow us to move, we want to access that, and we want to translate vector three dot left times time dot delta. All right, so what this does is that translate is a function in the transform class that allows for a smooth transitioning. So basically, if we, right now, uh, we are at position zero, zero. Don't mind the Y because we're not moving up and down, only uh, left, right, and uh, in depth and towards the screen. So C, uh, X, X and C or Z are at zero, 0, If we want to move, it changes. But this is a smooth transaction. You can see it changes small amounts at a time. So it's not like jumping from one and then suddenly minus one. That's a big jump. And we don't want, don't want that because it looks ridiculous. So what translate does is that it takes this vector, uh, vector 3, which is basically a position vector. It's a 3D point in space. And the vector 3 left is the 3D point in space that represents negative 1. Sorry, negative 1. Uh, so it moves towards the left. So it takes this uh, vector that we supply and then it moves our transform uh, to towards that vector, and then we uh, we mu we multiply the vector with time dot delta time because this update happens really fast. So if we were to move like one um, point in space every time, it would only take ten updates for us to reach the edge of our plane. So it only take one sixth of a second in order and we don't want that so time dot delta time basically makes this movement smaller in comparing to the update so that it doesn't uh, well yeah fly away we can however if we want to add a velocity um, A velocity variable we add public uh, we add um, class specific variables uh, up here as you should know and um, let's just set it equal to five there we go so now it's a bit faster than normal we can set it to uh, to one by default so you can just see how fast it is it's not that fast and you might also notice that here in our player script, now that I added a public variable to the script, in the uh, inspector, it allows us to change this public variable. So let's just change it to five, and you can see it goes much faster. But we're off screen now, so we can't move the other way. So let's take care of that, the moving the other ways, of course. Uh, moving right is as simple as change, changing to see if horizontal axis is above zero and um, up and down vertical axis vertical vertical this is down and this is up uh, but of course we don't want them all to move left so we want this one to move right and you should think that uh, you want this one to move down and you want this one to move up but in reality up and down 
corresponds to the y-axis and we don't want that so we're gonna have to create a new vector 3 because there's no uh, C specific vector 3 axis pre-made and um, 0 0.0 f 0 0 f and negative negative 1 f yes so basically this is doing the same thing as the others, but instead of using a pre-made vector 3, we're just making our own one that manipulates the c-axis. Uh, these ones manipulate the x-axis, so we would we could instead do this, uh, 1f, and it would do exactly the same thing, but there's no reason to do that. Let's just not... Right, all right, so this should work and we should be able to move our player around going a little bit slow, but of course it's defaulted to one, so let's amp it up a bit. And here we go, we can move around our plane and it's as easy as that really. There isn't really much mumbo jumbo or hocus pocus, we're just simply listening for mouse uh, or for the player's input. And then we are manipulating the transform, which is the position in 3D space uh, where the cube or the player is positioned. Um, so yeah, that's all for player movement, uh, at least in this concept. Um, so yeah, and uh, next time we will be getting into a little bit of physics because, you know, doesn't really have you don't have a realistic world where you can just walk around in space so we want our cube to if we fall out or something like that we want him to fall off the edge and plunge you into his death and <laughs> and we might also want some collisions like walls so it doesn't happen at all all right uh, so once again uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you guys for watching and uh, don't forget to uh, tag along next time. I'll see you. Bye